If you're a YouTuber or creator or influencer of any kind, you will at some point be approached with offers of sponsorship. Not all of them are as straightforward or trustworthy as they might appear at first glance. A week ago, I received this email. Hi, my name is Alexander, and I'm a representative of the Pole Boost team. We are creating software to increase FPS and optimize settings for games on computers with weak graphics cards. We want to know whether it is possible to order advertising on your channel, and how much does it cost? To be honest, I'm not very good at it, but our team has the opportunity to pay well for this. We plan to order a video review of our software from you, because you have good channel statistics and your videos are well recorded. This is not spam, and if you are ready to cooperate with us, I am waiting for an answer. Thank you. I'm not sure if YouTube's policies allow me to show the complete email address, but I hope they won't mind me disclosing it was a Gmail address. There's nothing inherently wrong in that. I use a Gmail address too. It was the nature of the product that made me skeptical, a feeling I should have trusted. Alas, my curiosity got the better of me and I clicked their link. I don't know whether YouTube's policies allow me to show the entire link, but you should see enough to observe its domain is .su. I had never come across this domain before, which should have prompted me to look it up. Stupidly, I thought it was one of the newer domains like .website or .studio. The website appears bare bones, though this does draw attention to the download link. I downloaded the setup only to find my antivirus had immediately deleted the file, having detected it to be a trojan for spyware. This was my wake-up call, the catalyst behind my investigation of Pole Boost. It shouldn't have taken me this long. I began by looking up the strange domain .su. If you haven't heard of it until now, you'll never believe its origins. .su was assigned as a country code top-level domain for the Soviet Union on 19th of September 1990. Even though the Soviet Union itself was dissolved a mere 15 months later, the .su top-level domain remains in use today. It is administered by the Russian Institute for Public Networks, RIPN or Rosnidos in Russian transcription. Well, you aren't administering it well enough. Security experts say the .su internet suffix assigned to the USSR in 1990 has turned into a haven for hackers who have flocked to the defunct superpowers domain space to send spam and steal money. Other Soviet sites are used to control botnets. The name given to the networks of hijacked computers used by criminals to empty bank accounts, crank out spam or launch attacks against rival websites. But experts say many are fraudulent. And even the organization behind .su accepts it has a problem on its hands. We realize it's a threat for our image, said Sergi, whose Moscow-based non-profit foundation for internet development took responsibility for .su in 2007. He insisted that only a small number of .su sites are malicious, although he acknowledged that criminal sites can stay online for extremely long periods of time. He said his hands were tied by the weak Russian legislation and outdated terms of service but he promised that stricter rules are on their way after months of legal legwork. We are almost there, he said. This summer, we'll be rolling out our new policy. It's not working, considering this article was published back in 2015. Internet hosting companies generally eliminate such sites as soon as they're identified. But Swiss security researcher Roman, whose abuse.ch blog tracks botnet's control sites, said hackers based in Soviet cyberspace can operate with impunity for months at a time. When asked for examples, he rattles off a series of sites actively involved in ransacking bank accounts or holding hard drives hostage in return for ransom, brazenly working in the online equivalent of broad daylight. Is this what Paul Boost wanted to do to me? Their scheme is unlike anything I had heard or read about, offering to sponsor the channel in exchange for advertising their product. The sophistication of this scam is unprecedented. They know their pitch will immediately be recognised for the scam it is by anyone remotely familiar with PCs. Any program that claims to boost performance is almost always a scam, unless it is a utility developed by hardware manufacturers like AMD's Ryzen Master or the OC scanner implemented by NVIDIA and their partners in programs like MSI Afterburner. And most importantly, the absolutely necessary and widely available ability to download more RAM. The scammers know their product lacks this credibility and instead attempt to infect their targets by trying to convince them they're not targets at all. The scammers cleverly masquerade as sponsors trying to sell a dodgy product, like YouTube doesn't have enough of those already. 
The lure of sponsorship might make some YouTubers disregard any apprehension they might have towards a thing being promoted. In this case though, the scammers have the YouTuber download and install the product in the process of promoting it. The YouTuber might think this is normal. Of course, I'd have to demonstrate the product I'm promoting. Completely oblivious to the fact that they're infecting their PC, making themselves the first victim. I shudder to think what might have happened if I was stupid enough to bite. I would have been responsible for infecting the PCs of subscribers who trust me enough to try anything I endorse. I hope you'll share this video to spread awareness of this new type of scam. Hopefully, no other YouTuber will come as close to putting themselves or their subscribers in danger as I did. Some might say I'm being paranoid. What if the antivirus threw up a false positive? Did I just burn bridges with a potential sponsor for nothing? To ensure this wasn't the case, I looked up Polboost and found nothing that substantiated their claims of who they were. Instead, I found two pages that confirmed my suspicions. The first is a transparency report from Google, which reports the current status of Polboost as unsafe. The site, polboost.ru, contains harmful content, including pages that install unwanted or malicious software on visitors' computers. That was certainly my experience. The second data point is even more alarming. On the 22nd of October 2019, a Russian named Kesti posted a plea for help on Google's support forum for YouTube. Unfortunately, his original post is in Russian, but this is how Google translated it. On October 19, a person approached me on the social network V Contact with a proposal to place an advertisement on the channel. After the negotiations, it turned out that my advertiser is engaged in games in the cloud. That is, it allows users with weak computers to play top-end games without breaks and with high FPS for a certain amount. That lines up perfectly with the offer I received. I'm a representative of the Pole Boost team. We are creating software to increase FPS and optimize settings for games on computers with weak graphics cards. Back to the Russian statement. And showed his site, poleboost.ru. He said that from me, he needs to record video data where I recommend to his audience as well as I use his services. But in order to start the gameplay, I need to download a special client application. This fraudster was very convincing and I did not raise any suspicions. After downloading and launching the application, nothing happened. There were no changes on the screen and I informed my interlocutor that some kind of error had probably occurred and the application was not installed on my computer. My interlocutor said in response that the site has not yet been completed and there may be some installation problems. A few hours later, namely 4.15pm Moscow time, I received a notification in the mail about the change of ownership of the channel. All my attempts to change the password and regain access to the Google account and the channel associated with it turned out to be futile because the attacker almost instantly changed the phone number for recovery. At the time of writing this text on my channel, no visual changes occurred. If this scares you, this isn't an isolated case. As sophisticated as their scam is, it's easy to spot once you know what you're looking for. I received another email, another offer of sponsorship to be precise, ostensibly from a different source, though close examination reveals striking similarities. Hi, my name is Daniel, and I'm a representative of the Reality Game Team. We are creating We Create, a cloud gaming software that lets you play games wherever and whenever you want. So, Stadia? I'm a regular employee of our company. Sounds legit. Who talks like this? Who writes like this? We want to know whether it is possible to order advertising on your channel and how much does it cost? To be honest, I'm not very good at it, but our team has the opportunity to pay well for this. We plan to order a video review of our software from you because you have good channel statistics and your videos are well recorded. This is not spam. And if you are ready to co-op with us, I am waiting for an answer. Thank you. Comparing reality game to poll boost, we find these sentences in common, word for word. Other similarities include the use of Gmail and the domain of the Soviet Union. Though the two products seem nothing alike, one being a product and the other being a service, both of them sound incredibly generic, yet at the same time completely improbable for no-name companies to develop. Reality game goes one step further by choosing a name so generic that it will never turn up on search engines even if it is detected. The most striking aspect they share is they all want me to download and install their software. And they're quite desperate for me to do so. Of course, they insist it's purely for the purpose of promoting their product, but I know better. And now, 
so do you. I'll be keeping an eye on the situation and upload updates should the scammers try to retaliate in any way. So please subscribe, press the bell and select all. YouTube won't notify you of new uploads unless you select all. And of course, don't forget to download your free RAM.